Shall we bow our heads, close our eyes as we pray? Our great and eternal King, the God who rules on high, the mighty Maker, the glorious Redeemer, the Ancient of all days, we bless your name. Thank you for another moment, another time of coming before you to seek your face in praise and worship, to pray to you, as well as to be reminded of important details of what you have said in your word. Thank you, Father, for our ears are open. May you speak into our spirit, man. What the apostle said in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16, he said that the eyes of your understanding be made enlightened. Father, I pray, may the eyes of somebody here be made enlightened this morning. And may you bless us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. Lord, we worship you. Jesus' name we are prayed. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. The book of John chapter 14 verse 1. Please have your seat. The book of John chapter 14 verse 1. Jesus Christ speaking said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus Christ speaking. He said, Don't allow your heart to be troubled. Don't allow your heart to be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Went for that to say, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, ye may be also. Somebody shout hallelujah. We have been looking at an important subject. It is the subject of preparing to meet the Lord thy God. And there is no better time that such a subject should be treated in the church. It is just to remind every one of us sitting down hearing this voice today that Jesus Christ is coming back again. A message of this of great importance is cast today. We are enveloped with so many ceremonies and a lot of troubles, a lot of issues. And in churches today, preachers are prepared to preach what the members, the congregation are ready to hear. Nobody wants to remind somebody about eternity anymore. And that is the reason why you see the moral decadence. That's the reason why you see the careless living, even in the life of an average Christian in our world today. In the church of the living God, the church that ought to be an instance of what heaven should look like, the church that ought to be a collection of people that even without opening the Bible, you should be able to know and see Christ from their languages, from their thoughts and imaginations, and from their attitude, their character, and their dispositions, their conversations. But that is not what you are seeing in our time today. A lot of compromises that we are seeing recorded even in Christendom. Deception, hypocrisy, and to make it worse, preachers are coming to interpret the Bible to suit their own context in preaching in order to deceive a great number of people, making names to themselves, and then building empires for themselves. But I thank God that the word of God has not changed. I thank God that we can still open the scripture and read the word of God and be reminded of eternity. And this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I have a singular mandate this morning to jolt the church. To jolt the church and to tell the church that indeed that Jesus Christ is coming back again. He's coming back again. My Lord is coming back again. He went away and promised he's that he's, he's coming, coming back, back again. I say, he's coming back again. My Lord is coming back again. Oh, oh glory, glory, hallelujah. He's, he's coming back again. On the last day, on the last day. Only true believers 
shall be right. Let me hear you sing on the last. I say on the last. Only to believe I shall be right. There are songs dedicated for this all important event that is coming very soon. There are songs that have been released to tell people that this event is real. And there is no better time to consider such a subject as this. Seeing the happenings in the world today, the lawlessness, the violence, the fears, the worries, the anxieties, and all kinds of natural, terrible disasters, terrorism, kidnapping, and a great number of painful experiences occurring everywhere and all over the entire world. If there is any time needed, to speak on a subject as this, this is certainly the time. Prepare to meet the Lord thy God. We should, as the body of Christ, as Christians, know the word of God. We should, as the church, be reminded of this and be prepared ourselves while we also seek to enable or to help others to be prepared for this great event. It's not going to be very funny. It's not going to be very easy for those people who will be left on the face of the earth when that great event takes place. Are you hearing my voice today? It's not going to be easy for you if you are a child of God and you are left behind because neighbors will ask you questions. Your friends, they will ask you questions. Even your enemies will ask you questions. People will say, we used to see you go with them to church. We used to see you read this Bible. You used to come to our community, to our neighborhood, to teach us these things. We used to hear you shout at the top of your voice that Jesus Christ is coming. What has happened? Why are you still here? We have just heard it on the radio. We have just heard it on the TV. We viewed it. We saw it. Calamities here and there because there were some drivers that were born again, which you professed to be then. But they left and all of a sudden, the vehicle had accident, crashed and killed a lot of people. We heard that aircraft everywhere, there are crashes up and down that planes are falling into the rivers, into the sea. We saw it on TV, on social media. We opened our, our YouTube. We are seeing pictures and videos everywhere. So we ran to come and check you, Mr. Preacher. We ran to come and see you, Mother of Jesus. Why are you still here? It will not be funny. You will not be able to explain to the people. And I pray for somebody hearing my voice today. You will not be here to make explanation. That is when people we know. Ah, so you have been an hypocrite all this time, but they will blame you. They will say, when we enjoy, you didn't follow us to enjoy. You castigated us, you criticized us, you spoke against us, and today, you see, we enjoy at least we did something. But look at you, you wasted the time, you wasted your life, you wasted all the moments you went to church. I pray for somebody, it will not be your experience. I say it will not be your experience. So here in this morning, I am here to let you know that believers, please be fired up. Backslider, please return back home. And if there is anybody that is here, you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, sinners, please be well informed, be adequately told that Jesus Christ is coming back again. Our study in the first consideration of this subject and in the second, we look at this event called the rapture. And then we also you know, make a little information available to us concerning 
the revelation of Christ. There in the teaching so far, ladies and gentlemen, we have told you, I have personally informed you, that we in this assembly, we in this church, we belong to a school of thought that is called the pre-tribulationist because there are so many schools of thought to this important issue. But glad to inform you that all the various schools of thought agree to something. And what is that? That Jesus Christ is coming back again. So the common denominator, ladies and gentlemen, should be your preparation, my preparation. How prepared are you? Please ask your neighbor, are you prepared for the rapture? I say, my neighbor, my neighbor. The warning is sounded there today. The alarm is blowing right now. How prepared are you for the rapture? The fact available to us based on scriptures tells us that look, there are two different events make up one. And that one is called the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But these two events, event number one is called the rapture. It will come first. Event number two is called the revelation of Christ. It will come next. These two together make up one, the second coming of Christ. Inability to separate these two is what has led to school of thought as far as this subject is concerned. Inability to separate these two is what has led to so many confusion, even in the Christendom at the hour. But suffice that these events are well stated, well recorded, and well explained. Thank God for Jesus Christ. He did not leave us in the dark. Matthew chapter 24 and in verse 6. Please write it down. Jesus Christ says, seeing that all these things will happen. He said, all these things will take place. And what are these things? The various things I have explained or have mentioned, I have stated, including all kinds of evil things happening in our world today. You see, it's not as if these things were not happening in the time past. They were happening in the time past, but the rapid successions, the unprecedented manner in which these things are happening calls for serious caution and attention. They are happening every day. Before this time, life was sacred. Before this time, people could have regard for life. But you see, the days in which you are living, people are killed and destroyed at random. People are just brought down, killed and put to the grave untimely in our time. Life is no longer regarded as anything. They killed adults, they killed men. They kill women, they kill children. They even will kill a, a, a pregnant woman with, with the baby inside and rip off the whole thing and kill and slaughter and even video it and send it all over the entire world. It shows the level of wickedness that the devil has carried mankind into. Look at our days. In our time today, you see what is happening. Nations of the world are even legislating crimes and wickedness. They are legislating evil in our time. And then they call them by various things and give it to them. It's their fundamental right. They call them the LGBTQ, whatever name they want to call it. But all these things are evil and wickedness in our time. How can you say a man to marry a man, a woman to marry a woman, and say give them their, their right? The creator of the entire human beings created man and woman, male and female. And he gave them different features. And he made specifically the reasons, clearly stated, of why he made them. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to verse 28, he, he said, look, I have made you male and female. Be what? Fruitful and multiply. It is a command. So man will now deliberately using legislation to negate the commandment of God, to abuse God to his face and say God did not know what he was doing. They say they want to enjoy pleasure. A lady and a lady will come together. But ladies should understand that pleasure you are seeking to get, God created what we call the opposite sex, the male, to have certain feature that can give you the maximum benefit. You see the distortion in our society today. 
goes on to tell us that there is a very serious problem. But I thank God that the word of God has not changed. The fact about the rapture, very clearly, the rapture will take place before the great tribulation. The features that is supposed to tell us that look, the rapture is knocking at the door. We are seeing it around us at this hour. But hear me. After the rapture, immediately after the rapture, I have told you here, there will be a seven years period of indescribable, inexplicable woes upon the face of the earth. Mankind will be taken to conditions that has never been since the creation of the world. Terrible times people will experience. The one you are seeing at the hour is very small. That time, nobody will be able to stand it. And that is why the Lord is saying it to us. Like we read in Isaiah chapter 58 in verse 1. He said, blow the trumpet. He said, cry with a lamentable and loud voice and spear not. He said, make known to my people their transgression. Tell them their sins. There are congregations that they don't want to hear anything about sin. They don't want to be reminded of what they are doing that is evil in the sight of God. And preachers are deceiving them. They will not come to church on a Sunday morning to tell them that this world is transient. This world is temporal. That a time will come, we'll check out of this life, whether at death or at rapture. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. They are not reminded about the judgment. But here we are this morning, we are reminding ourselves about the rapture. The rapture will take place. And after that you have the great tribulation. The great tribulation will occur. And those careless Christians who will not make it, they will run in everywhere. Running to dodge from the Antichrist. Because it's going to be a global system. A centralized program. Already the future you are seeing it. 20 years ago, nobody knew that you could have a number that can tie you to everything that you are doing on the face of the earth. One day, in the banking industry, they woke up what they call the BVN. And with this BVN, every account you have, if you have, if you have 10 accounts, all those accounts are connected together. Creating a central stage for the rapture to take place, for the Antichrist to rule. Because when the Antichrist comes to rule, there will be instruction that will be given to people. Do like this. Failure to do it, you can't buy. You can't sell. And how are you going to feed? You say, I have money in the bank account. They freeze the whole thing through your BVN. If the BVN was not there, you could say, if they freeze account A, in access bank i still have you know money in gt bank once they freeze it through your bvn they freeze the whole of the account you don't have access to your money anymore look at what happened to us just a year ago in the course of trying to change the currency see how people suffered are you aware that people died during that period people went to the bank to go and collect their money they died in the process of collecting their money it was so difficult to a point that people could not access cash god was just giving us a picture what i like to call a preamble a tip of the iceberg to tell you when that time comes it will be much much difficult than this people will be running looking for where to get something to eat and they'll say, look, all those people that refuse to identify with this present system, they are troublemakers. Throw them to jail. 
put them in detention, go after them, and all the likes. They will enter church like this for preachers that will still be remaining on the face of the earth to preach. That's when the preachers there will be reminding their congregation, see, this thing is actually it has taken place. I'm sorry I didn't make it, but uh, let's do something to help ourselves. Look at your name and say, neighbor, you will make it. Say, neighbor, you will not be part of that congregation. I will make it. I didn't hear somebody. I will make it. The rapture is the very event the church is waiting for at this time. That's the event we are waiting for right now at this hour. Don't miss it. Let me quickly tell you the difference between the rapture and the revelation of Christ. I call it the rapture of the saints and then the revelation of the Savior. These are two events and they were called differently. The rapture of the saints, according to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 13 to verse 17. The rapture of the saints. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 13 to verse 17, tells us about an event that should take place. It is the sudden catching up to heaven of the true believers please listen to my point of emphasis the true believers the true believers in Christ both dead and living the sudden catching up of the true believers in Christ to heaven to meet the Lord in the air what am I saying? What I'm saying authoritatively from that scripture is that a time is going to come, hear me, that the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ, according to that scripture, shall be here lifted. And the living saint at that point in time also shall be changed. Confirm it in the book of First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 and verse 52 they will be here lifted against the force of gravity gravity will no longer have effect on such people on that day they will be here lifted without a propeller they will be here lifted without an aircraft they will be here lifted without a rocket without any device but they will go to meet the Lord in the air that's the rapture. That's the rapture. And the Bible tells us that when they meet the Lord, they will settle down for a period of seven years of what we call the marriage supper of the Lamb. Why that is going on on earth here? The great tribulation is also taking place simultaneously. At the close of that seven years period, of bliss and enjoyment in the heaven having the longest wedding program so far at the close of the seven years Jesus Christ will return back with those saints to planet earth to commence what we call the 1000 millennium reign of Christ on the face of the earth when Jesus Christ will distribute cities and places for those that were faithful in service to rule over. Somebody hear me. This tells us also the uh, difference between these two great events. And this morning, very quickly, before we pray, I want to just give us or remind you of the illustrations based on the word of God. The illustrations that tells us about the rapture. The illustration that tells us that look, it has happened before, it will happen again. These illustrations are found written in scriptures. The first illustration, Enoch, in the book of Genesis chapter 5. In the book of Genesis chapter 5, and then we see a man called Enoch in verse 24. Please turn your Bible. Genesis chapter 5 and in verse 24. Oh, hear this. 
And Enoch walked with God. And he was not. For God took him. Enoch walked with God. How do we mean? Enoch lived a consistent life of godliness, righteousness, purity, holiness, serving the Lord. And God decided in his own prerogative and sovereignty that Enoch, you are too good, you are too wonderful, you will not die. God took Enoch away. That's what the Bible says, he was not. He did not face death. He was not dead. He was carried, he was he lifted to heaven. That is an instance of how the rapture is going to look like. For those that are doubting, how can somebody, physical human being, just go, how about the force of gravity, that anything you throw up will come down? Are they going to break the law of gravity? Scientists are reasoning that way. But this is an instance. Second Kings chapter 2. Verse 11, verse 12, give us another instance. And that's the instance of Elijah of Tishbite. Elijah was to be lifted one day to heaven above. And Elijah decided to go on that journey. Thank God for Elisha. Elisha followed him and got to the place of separation. And when it was time, the Bible tells us that great chariot from above came and Elisha, Elijah was lifted and went with chariot of fire. That is a picture of the rapture. Listen to me. In the book of Romans chapter 15 and in verse 4, please put it down and let's read it. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Hear this. For whatsoever things were written a four time whatsoever things were written previously in the time past a four times were written for our learning please touch your neighbor and say neighbor these things preacher is speaking are written for our learning so what i just told you in genesis chapter 5 verse 24 second Kings chapter 2 verse 11 verse 12 those two events I have just given to you, they were written for our learning. Listen to me. In the book of Matthew, also, chapter 24, Jesus Christ is speaking from verse 1 to the last verse. He was giving a vivid description of what I'm talking about this morning. But in verse 6, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Say, All these things will happen, but don't be troubled. And in the book of Acts chapter 1, did you read it there? In the book of Acts chapter 1, the Bible tells us at a point when they were gathered. Uh, let's look at it together. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. And then I'm reading here in verse 9. From verse 9. Acts chapter 1. And when he has spoken these things... Why they beheld? Why they beheld? They were still looking. Jesus Christ was still speaking with them. He was talking to them face to face. They were looking at him. Why they beheld? He was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. He was still talking to them. And all of a sudden, he began to go. Please, where he was talking to them was on Mount Olives. It was at that moment he was talking because he told them to meet him there. As he was still exhorting them, encouraging them, telling them, like he told them, you know, earlier on, he said, Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endured the power from on high. Don't leave Jerusalem. I am coming back again. I will baptize in the power of the Holy Ghost. Remain here so that you be witnesses unto me, both in Judea and Samaria and in all over the world. So to stay, while he was still talking to them, he was here lifted. And they beheld and they saw him going. Don't tell me Jesus Christ was a spirit. That was why I was going that way. No. Because when he resurrected, you know what happened? He came down. 
to visit the disciples, the apostles. And on a particular occasion, because Thomas had doubted him, Thomas had doubted the testimony of the other disciples. Well, what are you talking about? Jesus Christ is risen. Well, until I see him, I will not believe. So he appeared one day in the upper room and he met them then. He singled out Thomas. He said, Thomas, come. He said, Thomas, come. Put your hand to this very hole where they drill him the nails and feel that imprint on my, on my palm. And Thomas did so. He showed the other hand. Thomas put it. He saw it. He said, can you test my sight and see where they struck that arrow through? He saw it. Nobody taught Thomas to bow and worship God. He said, my Lord and my God. That was a physical body but an immortal body. So when God, Jesus was lifted before their very eyes, they saw him going. They saw him going. They saw him going. They saw him going. That is an instance to tell you that that's how that church is going to be. Because Jesus Christ is the firstborn among the brethren. So he has tasted it. You also will be tasted. You also go that manner. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we see that as an illustration that the rapture definitely will take place. Not only that, that we as Christians, if you are still alive, you are still alive then, listen to me, that you are not going to be part and parcel of the great tribulation of the suffering on the face of the earth is illustrated very clearly in Matthew chapter 24. When Jesus Christ was talking about the days of Noah, he said, as the days of Noah was, what were, were they doing? Eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriages. As the days of Lot, the same thing, Sodomy, what you are calling LGBTQ today, was the feature in the days of Lot. Sodomy, homosexuality, and all form of gay practices. They were having at that time. Have you forgotten that one day angels visited Lot and very fine gentlemen has entered the house of Lot. They came to Lot that night. They said, Lord, we learned that there are some imported human beings there, men that are inside this place. Bring them out so that we can also have fun with them. Hallelujah. They were sodomites, they were homosexuals. Jesus Christ said, as the days of Lord was, that's what we are having today. They are clamoring for their fundamental rights in our time. But the Bible tells me in that two account, or both the Noamic account and the Lord's account, somebody hear me. The Bible tells me that on those two accounts, God separated the wheat from the chaff. All of a sudden, the rain is going to fall unabatedly. And it's going to fall for many days, for many months. And the world is going to be destroyed completely. Trees will be covered. Skyscrapers will be covered by flood. But God will have no one to prepare an ark. And God will have no one to bring the ark, I mean, to, to bring himself, his family, and all the animals into the ark. And then God will shut the door by himself and take the key to heaven and unleash rainfall on the face of the earth. But you see, before that indescribable, terrible suffering of flood that destroyed the entire human lives and the entire world, Noah's ark was ready. And the people were taken inside. Noah, his wife, and three children, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. They were ready inside. All the animals, God ordered that Noah should take them in. Male, female, male, female, male, female. Sodomites should learn even from animals. Gay people should learn even from animals. Scientists of the world should learn even from animals. And all the philosophers of this world should learn even from animals. That God brought them in with instruction. Male, female. Male, female. Because that is the way God set it from the foundation, from the onset. And the moment they entered, there was trouble. That's how the rapture will be. God is going to come. 
It will just be like having a magnet on iron filings. If you put wood, pieces of wood, on the paper, and some iron filings on the paper, and you carry magnets and hover on them like this, which one will be attracted? The iron filing will go up. That's how it is. Sinners, believers. Saints, sinners. Godly, ungodly. When the Lord appears, there will be a separation. But the trumpet shall sound. So I celebrate our, our children, Jesus Choir, that said, I want to go to heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor. Say, Neighbor. Do you want to go to heaven? Don't mind modern preachers of today. Yes, they have large congregation. Yes, they have large number of followers. And for that reason, they are very popular. And they are making detestable, they are making unpleasant and terrible statements trying to speak the word of God. Don't mind them. Don't mind them telling you that there is nothing like heaven. It's not on planet earth here. Don't mind them. Because God is going to do what he has said he will do. You will not miss it. I will not miss it. What will be the preparation expected from you and I? Very quickly. The preparation expected from you and I. Number one, as a matter of urgency, as a matter of great importance to your soul, run to Christ for salvation. Careless soul, oh, heed the warning. For your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad will it be for you to face the judgment unprepared to meet the Lord thy God. Run to the Savior for your salvation. Jesus Christ did not come for ceremony. He did not just come to, uh, to preach. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believe in Him should not do what? Perish. But I've got that means that those that will not believe in him will perish. That's what it means. Did you read it there in verse 18 and in verse 36? He said, For God sent not his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be what? Saved. It doesn't matter your religion, it doesn't matter your philosophical understanding and ideas. It doesn't matter what you have imbibed in your system. What matters is the word of God that has been given to humanity. Leave all the you know, duplication in the world in the name of religion. The Bible says that through him, the world, whatever religion, traditional worshippers, and any kind of religion, whatever, that through him, the world, might be saved. And the Bible says, he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he does not believe in the holy begotten Son of God. So for those that like to ask questions, how about the people of the other religion? How about the traditional worshippers? Are they all going to hell? Please, Use the Bible to answer that question yourself. Can you turn your Bible to the book of John, chapter 3? Very quickly, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son has what? Everlasting life. This is English. It's simple enough. Look at the B part. And he that believeth not the Son. The emphasis is the song. It is not religion. It is not he that does not uh, 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 believe, you know, 
uh, in a, he that not believe in the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, shall not see life, but the wrath, the anger, the fiery indignation, the judgment of God abided on him. Has that answered your question? It's simple. Don't tell me. The hype about all these other people. That's why he gave you the mandate. He gave us the mandate to go into all the world and do what? Preach the gospel to every creature. If there are alternatives, there is no need to preach. Because in their alternative, they can always seek that God and make heaven. And then some of them will tell you, but we are serving the same God. No, sir. We are not serving the same God. Because the God we serve is the God that has made his provision very, very clear. This is serious. It has answered the question. This is serious. So, number one is to run to the Savior for our salvation. That you find in the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, verse 29, and verse 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll do what? I'll give you rest. It's simple. Number two, reconcile with Anyone you have issues with, you have to be prepared for that day. You are keeping malice. You are harboring bitterness. Hey, don't allow because of malice you go to hellfire. Don't allow because of bitterness. Yes, I know she offended you. I understand he offended you. But Jesus Christ told us how to handle offenses. He said, go to him. Go and reconcile. He said in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to verse 25, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember us, that your brother have ought against you, he said, leave that gift at the altar. The important thing first is go and be reconciled. There's a reason why he's saying so. Because... Malice, bitterness, hatred will close the door of heaven against so many people. He said, Yes, I'm not committing fornication. I about that malice. He said, Yes, I do not steal. I about that bitterness. Where will you be when that trumpet shall sound? Reconcile with everyone and anyone. You have issues with in preparation for the rapture. Reconcile. Number three, read and meditate on the word of God daily. To so keep yourself prepared for the rapture. Don't forget number one, run to the Savior for salvation. Number two, reconcile with anyone you have issue with. Husbands, are you hearing me? Reconcile with your wife. Wife, are you hearing me? Reconcile with your husband. Parents in the house, reconcile with your children. Call that child, you offended me. I wasn't happy with you, but I forgive you. I remember a man of God in real life, not reading in a book. Few people here in this congregation. They will know the person I'm talking about. When it was time for God to take him home, we didn't know. I was very close to him. Very, very close to him. And he loved me so much. When I was coming back from my service here, he gave me an instruction. He said, please, when you return back to Lagos, come and stay with me. Stay in my house. And I stayed with that man for three years. I stepped out from his house to get my own house to marry. He followed me to the traditional engagement that I had with my wife. He followed me to the village. He loved me so much. So we used to discuss. I would discuss quite a lot of things. 
I didn't get the information clearly. I didn't have the understanding then. But he told me about his departure. But I didn't know. I didn't know. But he told me. So after he left, I remember he told me. After he left, I remember he told me. But this is where I'm going. When it was getting close to when he would be leaving, come and see this man doing a lot of balancing of accounts spiritually. There was a vow he made when the church was being built that time. And he was looking for money to pay that vow. He didn't have the money. He was trusting God and believing God for money to pay that vow. He didn't have the money. But all of a sudden, one day, somebody came and gave him money. And that money was exactly the amount he was looking for. And that day, the person came to give him money. Honestly speaking, I tell the truth in Christ, I lie not. There was no food in the house. It was a Saturday. One would have expected him to remove part of the money and give that we should buy food and eat in the house. No. He told me, he said, I've gotten the money I've been looking for. Ah. He said, I made a pledge to God in the building in the house of the house of God that tomorrow morning I'll drop this. And nobody queried it. But God provided for us surely. He paid that vow. The following week or so, there is this person that had offended him. In his prayer, I will hear him praying. So, so person offended me, but God has forgiven him. But Lord, I want to see this person and tell her, sorry, her, and tell her I've forgiven her. So that she will know I've forgiven her. She spoke against me. She told lies against me. She maligned me. People misrepresented me because of the lie. But I've forgiven her. I want to see her. And one of those days, that lady surfaced. After more than a year, she surfaced. And he told her, I'm a living witness. I've forgiven you. You can go and sin no more. And a few days later, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not giving you a story I read in the book. A few days later, he bade planet Earth goodbye. And he checked out of this existence. Reconciling and balancing his account. Ask me a million times, I'll tell you, that man has gone to heaven. Because at his burial, I went ahead to his village. I've never been there before. I went there a few days to the burial. To go and witness the burial. When the corpse, the casket arrived with the corpse inside that night, people that knew this man, they ran to go and at least let us touch this casket. How can this man go like this? He, he, he was a celebrated man. All the people that ran there, they were ministers of God, great, great men of God. You see, the speed with which they run to the casket is the same way the wave of the Holy Ghost blew all of them back. They fell like a pack of cards. Even at his death, nobody could touch that. Till everybody became afraid. I was somewhere in a room that they gave me. They were afraid to touch the casket. How are you going to bury this man? Nobody can touch it. The power carried them with great anointing. And then they now remember, they said, there is this young man that came from Lagos. He used to call him his son. Let us go and look for him to help us out. Otherwise, nobody can touch it so that somebody will not die. And they came to call me in the room. And I went there that night. And I got to the casket. Lifted up my hands. Say, blessed are thou who made the heaven and the earth. For you have confirmed the words of your servant. And you have shown to everybody here that this man was indeed your servant. Therefore, grant all the right to have him buried befittingly. I placed my hand on the casket and I told them, carry. And they carried. People reconciling account before they check out of this life. Where will you be? This thing is so real. I have tested. I know what I'm talking about. I've seen great men die. I've seen great men die. 
and I seen how prepared that they were. So I'm encouraging somebody in the house today. Make your account straight and right with God. Stand on your feet. Choir, can you sing that song for me if you can still remember it? Where shall I be when the trumpets are sound? Just sing the one you can sing. So loud when it's all so loud, I still wake up the dead. Where shall I be when it's all? Where shall I be when the first word and sound? Where shall I? Rot shall see. Where shall I be? Unto the rocks and mountains flee. Where shall I be? When hills and mountains flee away. Where shall I be? Listen when all the works of men decay. Where shall I be? Shall I be when it is now so loud? When it is now so loud, I to wake up the dead. Shall I be when it is now? Somebody listen to me. Did you hear that song? Where shall I be when that first trumpet has sound? Where shall I be when it sounds so loud? There are some people, they will be in the brothels. They will be in the hotels. They will be committing immorality. There are some people, they will be sleeping on a Sunday like this. Not coming to church. And the trumpet shall sound. And the Bible says the dead in Christ shall hear. Where shall you be? Where will you be? Sing. It now, where shall I be? When the voice will be heard, oh, where shall I be? When the sound so loud, when the sound so loud, I still wake up. Where shall I? Judgment day is drawing near. Where shall I be? When God the works of men shall try. Where shall I be? When east and west the fire shall roll. Where shall I be? Hear me now. I will be with my poor soul. Where shall I be? Oh, Where shall I be? Where the first road is on? Oh, Where shall I be? Where is now? Do I have somebody in the house here who want to do like that man of God? Balance the account, reconcile that account. Do I have somebody in the house here 
who remembers that man offended me and I have not forgiven him who remembers that lady offended me and I vowed not to forgive yes it is a decision I made do I have somebody here who is having bitterness against somebody do I have somebody here who is a deceiver an hypocrite or do I have somebody in the house here who is not serious with God you are not serious on a Sunday morning like this see you for dragging see you dragging your feet coming late to the house of God you don't fear God you don't fear God do I have somebody in the house here who is still telling lies do I have a fornicator in the house an adulterer in the house an immoral person in the house do I have somebody in the house here who is not truthful do I have somebody in the house here who is playing game with God do you have somebody in the house here who has not yet made up his mind but this moment that person can do that do you have such a person in the house here or oh, do you have somebody here you were used to be a child of God people knew you to be a child of God but you see these days you cannot even tell yourself where you stand do you have somebody here that everybody is now wondering what happened to you? why are you like this I want to reconcile back Run to Christ for salvation today. If I have such a person, please put up that hand. I want to pray for you. Lift up the hand. God bless his hands. Lift it up very well. Lift it up very well. Lift it up. 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 Do I have such a person who wants to reconcile? I can say, God, I don't want to miss it at the close of the Where is the What are those hands? Can I have you come out like that? I want to pray for you. Stop to the altar. I want to pray for you. That man was not a normal human being. A man that after he died, and one of the times he appeared before me, he said, Follow me, and I followed him. And we got a very big sea like water. And he put his hand in the breastplate of the, of the suit he was wearing, well dressed, and brought out a scroll. He said, Take this and go on this life journey and tell the people heaven is real. Heaven is real. If you are in the congregation, you have not given your life to Christ. What are you waiting for? How prepared are you? Run to Christ today for your salvation. Reconcile with those you have issues with. Read the word of God and meditate on it. And don't forget, ensure that you have your fellowship with Christ at will. For those of you that are in the altar here, pray this prayer after me. As I lead you to rededicate your life to Christ, to recommit yourself unto Jesus. Someone say, my Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, my Lord Jesus. I submit and surrender to you. No more religion. I make up my mind today to follow you through. Say, so I lift up my right hand and I hold on to you. Say, till you return back to planet Earth, I will remain faithful. Lord Jesus, I ask you come into my heart. And take hold of my soul in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for these people, these ones, children, teenagers, adult men, women, married, single. I pray for every one of these people that God will show mercy. The one that need to readjust, grant the grace. The one that need to submit to commit and to hand over a heart, his heart, his life unto Jesus, grant the grace. Let the mercy of God be revealed, Lord Jesus. Enter now into their heart and take your place in their life. Be their master, be their Lord, and be their personal saviors. Lord Jesus, I pray that Lord, in this journey of life, they will not look back. Like lost wife, they will not look back. In the name of Jesus, may you grant them the grace and the strength. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. God bless you. Let's get back to our seat. Everybody who is standing, close your eyes. Lift up your two hands, everybody. Your two hands in total surrenderedness unto God. And in preparation for His coming again. Lift up your two hands. And then pray this prayer. Say, my Father, my Maker. Say, my Father, my Maker. 
Say, my father, my maker, keep me ready. Keep me worthy. Say it again. Say, my father, my maker, keep me ready. Keep me worthy. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive your grace. I receive your grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We will not miss it. I say we will not miss it. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. You will not miss it. Amen. This is my constant prayer. That I will not miss it. And every day I search myself. Every day. Lord, where do I stand? I know I'm in Christ Jesus. But keep me. I pray for you. The Lord will keep you. 